All right, let's talk about something huge. We're going to tackle one of the most fundamental rules of the universe, a number that's been etched into physics textbooks for more than 100 years, the speed of light. We've always, always treated it as the ultimate constant, unchanging, absolute. But what if it's not? I mean, just think about that for a second. What if the cosmic speed limit actually changes depending on where or maybe even when you are in the universe? It sounds like something straight out of science fiction, right? But here's the thing. Brand new data combined with a really bold new theory is forcing physicists to take this idea very, very seriously. It's a direct challenge to a century of established physics. So how could this even work? Let's start with a simple analogy to wrap our heads around it. Think about the speed of sound. We all know it travels at one speed through the air, but it travels way faster through water. Why? Because the speed depends on the medium it's traveling through. Well, this new theory proposes something kind of similar for light, that space-time itself isn't totally empty. It's filled with a dynamic field that can change the effective speed of light. Okay, but why are we even talking about this now? It's all because of a stunning cosmic mystery, and we have the James Webb Space Telescope to thank for it. JWST is peering back to the absolute dawn of time, and it's finding these massive, well-formed galaxies that, according to our standard model of cosmology, just shouldn't exist yet. They grew up way, way too fast. Seriously, it's like finding a fully grown oak tree where you'd expect to see a tiny little sapling. So how in the world do you grow an oak tree overnight? The problem is so deep, so profound, that it might require a completely radical solution. And that brings us to this new theory where the very fabric of space-time isn't just a passive stage for things to happen on, but is actually an active participant in the whole cosmic drama. The hero of this new story is something called the supergraviton field, which physicists call phi. Now, this idea actually has its roots in string theory, you know, the big attempt to unify all the forces of nature. The core concept is that this invisible field is just everywhere. But here's the crucial part. Its value isn't fixed. It can change over cosmic time and all across space. And here's the absolute game changer. As the value of this field changes, so do the properties of space-time within it. This means the constants we thought were totally fixed, like the speed of light and even the strength of gravity, well, they actually depend on the local value of this field. It's like the universe had a hidden turbo button in its earliest moments, one that put its entire evolution on fast forward. Now, what makes this theory so compelling is that it isn't just some wild guess. It's built on a really stable mathematical foundation that avoids all sorts of paradoxes, what physicists call being ghost-free. And most importantly, it clears a huge hurdle that completely killed previous theories like this. A few years ago, we observed gravitational waves that proved gravity and light travel at the exact same speed. At least, they do today. This new theory perfectly allows for that while still letting their speeds be totally different in the distant past. It's a massive deal. So, okay, we have a compelling theory that avoids all the old pitfalls. That's great. But what about the evidence? Let's look at the clues coming directly from the dawn of the universe itself. So when scientists ran the numbers comparing our standard model of cosmology to this new idea using the latest data from JWST, well, one number really stood out, 12.7. And you know, in the language of statistics, that's not just a hint. That is a shout from the rooftops. To put that number in perspective for you, it means the odds of our standard model being a better explanation for what JWST is seeing are about 1 in 330,000. Statisticians don't just call this strong evidence, they call it decisive evidence. The data from the early universe is pretty clearly telling us it prefers a model where the laws of physics were different back then. And this is how the theory solves the mystery of those overgrown baby galaxies. By tweaking gravity and the other constants in the early universe, this model slams the fast-forward button on galaxy formation by a factor of over 3,000. It gives the universe exactly the turbo boost it needed to build those massive structures in time. It just works. This is all absolutely fascinating. But a truly great scientific theory does more than just explain a mystery after the fact. It has to make bold, testable predictions. And this theory has set up a series of high-stakes tests for the next decade that will either confirm it or, you know, break it completely. And here it is, the roadmap to either prove it or break it. Over the next decade, we're going to be attacking this from every possible angle. The Webb Telescope is going to continue its hunt for more of these impossible galaxies. 
Right here on Earth, hyper-accurate atomic clocks will be listening for the faintest whispers of changing constants, and brand new telescopes will measure echoes from the Big Bang itself with just unbelievable precision. And this, right here, is the mark of real science. The theory isn't slippery. It draws clear, hard lines in the sand. If the JWST suddenly stops finding these massive early galaxies, the theory is in deep trouble. If the future LISA mission detects no changes in the speed of ancient gravitational waves, the theory fails. It makes these bold predictions, which means it can be definitively proven wrong. That's how you know it's worth taking seriously. In fact, it makes some incredibly precise predictions. One of the biggest tests is gonna come from the CMB S4 telescope, which measures ancient ripples from the Big Bang. This theory predicts a very specific signal strength, a value they call R, of exactly 0 0.048. Not around there, exactly that. If they find that number, it is a smoking gun. I think this really puts it all into perspective. We could be on the verge of a revolution in physics on the same scale as relativity. You know, Einstein taught us that our experience of time and space is not absolute. This new theory just takes the next logical step. It suggests that even the speed of light, the very bedrock of relativity, might also be relative, just a product of its environment. So let's just zoom out for a minute. If this theory actually holds up under all this scrutiny, what does it really mean for us and our understanding of the universe? I mean, the implications are nothing short of profound. The so what factor here is just enormous because this isn't just one solution to one little problem. The theory suggests this single field could be the missing link that solves other deep mysteries from the black hole information paradox to the very nature of dark energy. On a more practical level, understanding this field could even lead to totally new quantum technologies. But maybe the biggest implication is philosophical, that the fundamental constants we've built all of our science on aren't fundamental at all. This slide just perfectly captures the paradigm shift we were talking about. We would move from a universe where space-time is just a passive, boring stage for events to happen on, to one where it's an active, dynamic player. A universe where the fundamental constants are just emergent properties, kind of like how the temperature of a room emerges from the motion of countless little atoms. And so this leaves us with a thrilling, tangible question for the very near future. We have the theory, we have the first hints of evidence, and we have the experimental roadmap all laid out. The only question left is, which one of these tests is going to provide the definitive answer and be the first to force us to rewrite all of our textbooks? Thanks for joining us.